second one is exercise. Research has shown that without a minimum of exercise, uh, that the maximum well-being, and this means psychological and physiological um, uh, well-being of a human being, is not possible, period. And um, um, it's possible uh, to achieve this in as little as 20 minutes a day, three times a week. That's one hour out of an entire week that, um, that can be spent in what's called aerobic exercise. Dr. Kenneth Cooper's work in aerobics that most of you are familiar with is a good text for that. The third is biochemical individuality. This is um, an interface between uh, a growing um, edge type thing. Uh, we feel that we're uh, among the first people in um, the nation on this. Not the first. We didn't pioneer it. We've relied on the wonderful medical work of pioneering doctors in this uh, study of uh, biochemical individuality. But we're finding that individuals respond psychologically and physiologically enormously different depending on various foods. What's literally what's one man's meat is another man's poison um, in a very literal way. There are foods that um, it is possible for most everyone in this room, if you were to eat certain foods and really be able to, um, not, if you eat those alone after having stayed away for about four days so that you're really clear on what is the cause and effect, there are certain foods that one can eat that make you feel really fine and are nutritious and other foods, a minority fortunately of foods, that will actually change the technique of brain accessing and create negative separating um, effects in what you access. And, uh, go, it'll make you go after one. And it'll t take the addictive demands that we normally run and turn them up by a factor of a hundred. That dramatically with most of us. So this is the, these are the three areas that we find most needing to be focused on in the area of body in the science of happiness. The second one is mind. How can we use this wonderful biocomputer, this great rational mind that we have, that's the hallmark of the human species. You know, Aristotle defined man as a rational animal. We might argue with that in some ways, but um, uh, this is no doubt uh, one of the biggest uh, ways we are distinguished from many other forms of life. And um, in our book, Taming Your Mind, it explains what I regard as the most effective way of using your mind to avoid most of the pitfalls that lead us to make unsound decisions, decisions we make in life that we later regret because we uh, certain factors left out of our wonderful um, thinking processes. Um, so this is the second part of the science of happiness. The third part, the spiritual part, the psychological part, or if you want to just say plain old horse sense part, is living love. The entire 244 system which we presented much of during this workshop. Now, here's what happens. When you become is skillful at using all three of these parts of the science of happiness, you become very rich inside, experientially rich, contented, happier and happier, more and more loping along in life rather than plowing under problem after problem, deep down, you know, a lot of the time depressed. It's like you're playing life as a game. Uh, our actions, they still have consequences and so forth, but we can deal with life in an enjoyable, surfing through it way, seeing the cosmic humor of it all, the mountaintop perspective. And as we become richer and richer, the ego is removed from its intense preoccupation with my security, my sensations. Am I getting enough? My power, my pride, my prestige, my money, my, 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 and on into the night throughout our dreams and all our waking hours. We become so rich inside that we are then able to give ourselves to the world, give ourselves to other people. And this means giving of our precious time. I haven't got time. I wish I could, but I don't have time. We find that we're able to be generous with our time. We're able to be generous with money, with possessions, with 
uh, everything literally. It doesn't mean we go out and give it all away, uh, but that we have a balance. And the greatest pleasures of our life increasingly are to meaningfully be in the world knowing specifically that our life makes a difference. And I'm not necessarily saying it has to make some uh, great difference like winning the Nobel Prize. That's one level of the soap opera. But a person can live a very simple life and just help their next door neighbor and help their uh, children uh, when they need it. And uh, just by living an ordinary, so-called ordinary life, which is very extraordinary, because all lives are extraordinary, and you can live a very meaningful, very helpful, very rich life. So reaching out and using this increasing surplus of energy, which is no longer preoccupied by self, but by giving your energy to others, you reach the fulfillment in the science of happiness. Uh, we don't suggest helping others, social, being of social service to the world and to other people. We don't say that to be a good guy or something like that. We say that because you, we need it selfishly to live the most enjoyable life for ourselves. And the mechanism there is that if your life is preoccupied with self, it's going to be a roller coaster between pleasure and pain. Constantly clinging to whatever satisfies your addictions, constantly wringing your hands and uh, being uh, playing victim when your addictions are not satisfied. A roller coaster, up and down, pleasure and pain, happy and unhappy, which is the common procedure uh, that's created by 99% of the human beings on earth today.